When you need a sequence of numbers, for example, for looping a certain number of times with a for loop, you should use ranges. Not only are they really, really easy to use, but they are so much better than lists when it comes to memory usage. All right, so a range is a built-in Python type and represents a sequence of numbers that you can use in a for loop to loop a specific number of times and also, you know, to create a list of numbers. So the range function can take up to three arguments, but you can decide to pass only one, two or three. Okay. So if you pass only one, the value represents the value where we want the range to stop. And this number is not inclusive, which means that if you set the stop to 10, the last number will be nine. And of course the start number will always be zero by default. And this is inclusive and the step that we look at in a minute will always be one. Then if you pass two arguments, you've got the start and the stop. Okay. So the start is the value where we want the range to start from. And of course, in this case, it's inclusive. So if the start is two, then the first number will be two and the stop is the same as above. Okay. Then lastly, you've got three arguments. So the start, the stop and the step. Okay, the start and the stop in this case work exactly the same as above. And the step is basically the space, let's call it like that, between two numbers in the range. So if the step is one, as it is by default, the numbers would be, let's say zero, one, two. If the step is two, the number would be zero, two, four, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so let's see some examples. And then I'm gonna explain you how the range formula works and why ranges are better than lists when we only need to loop for a certain amount of numbers, for example. One important thing, let's comment this out. One important thing is that when you want to print a range, you cannot do something like print range because like that, you just get the range. So if you try to run that, as you can see range 0, 10. So you need to convert the range to a list. And to do that, you need the list constructor. Okay. This is also useful because you can use it even when you want, you know, to create a list from a range. So in this case, you can do something like print list range 10. And as you can see, you've got zero, one, two, three through nine. Okay. Then the second example is the range with the start. So let's try two twenty. as you can see, two, three through 19. And then you've got the last one, which is the one with the step. So let's do 50 and step 10. Okay. So we're going to see all of them. So zero through nine, two through 19, 10 through 14. Okay. As you can see, the 10 is not included in here. So you start from zero, you've got 10 numbers, but it starts from zero through nine. Then here, the two is included and the 20 is not included. And then here, as you can see, the 50 is not included because with the step 10, the last number needs to be less than the stop value. So the last number would be 50 and it's not less than 50 because it's equal to 50. Okay. So it's not included. So if you want to include the last number, you just need to add one number like that. And as you can see, now you've got 50, you've got 20. Okay. So make sure that if you want the last number to be 20, you need to just have the stop value a little bit greater than the 20 or 50, just a little bit greater in this case, 51. Okay. So let's clear this up. After these examples, and before going ahead and talking about negative steps, indexes and stuff like that, let's talk about lists versus ranges. So first of all, when we create a list of numbers, we're using as much memory as the number of elements we put into the list. So the more elements, the more consumption of RAM of memory. Okay. On the other hand, when we use a range, we use the same amount of memory that is necessary to only store the start, the stop and the step, because the range actually calculates the numbers only when needed using this simple formula that I'm going to show you. Okay. So the formula is range. Here you've got the index is equal to start plus step times the index. Of course, here, if you try to access an index that doesn't exist, you'll get an error as you would get an error with a list. 
okay? So let's make this fun. I'm gonna give you a range and an index. You then have to stop the video and work out the number at that index and write that down in the comments. Once you've done it, go ahead and see if you guessed it right. Okay, so the range is my range, range, 11, 616, the step four. You need to try to find my range, 154. So stop the video now and try to work it out and then come back and see if you guessed it right, okay? So hopefully you've done it. If we go back to the formula, which is this one, 11 plus four, which is the step times the index. And of course you get 627. You can try that out because you can do something like my range around 54. You can obviously, you need to comment this out and this out, also this out. Okay, if you run that, 627, okay? Hopefully you guessed it right. So this is how ranges don't use a lot of memory, okay? So when you loop through a range with a for loop, for example, Python starts from index zero and then goes one index by one up to the last index. Each number though is not really stored in memory, but it's calculated on the fly by Python, which means nearly no memory used, okay? So now I'm going to show you the difference in memory usage for a range and a list, and you'll definitely see what I mean, okay? I'm going to stop the video a minute to get everything ready on the screen, and I'll see you in a second. As you can see here, you've got all the Python processes that are running on my computer, okay? I'm not going to run this file, but I'm just going to use Python like that, okay? So now I'm using Python. As you can see, you've got a new, a new process here. This is where one you want to look at, okay? So let's try to create a big, big range. 100 millions, I think. Yep, okay, let's try. Look at the memory here. It didn't even move, okay? But let's now try with a list, a little disclaimer don't do this on your computer. This is going to create a list that will use a lot of memory. And if you don't have enough memory, the computer is definitely going to freeze or crash. So don't do it. Just trust me, don't do it. Okay. Unless of course, you know, for sure that you've got enough memory, like 16 gigabytes and stuff like that. Okay. So then let's create a list. So list, I'm going to use the range. Same number, let's check it. I don't want my system to crash. Okay, perfect. Let's run it. Look at the memory here, of course. Da -da. As you can see, 3.7 gigabytes. Did you get now why you should use ranges? Okay, so let's actually exit. Okay, let's wait. As you can see, the memory is going down. Okay, so nothing there anymore. Okay, let's go back here. Okay, I know this is not essential for a rain tutorial, but I thought, you know, it would be cool to show you that. Okay, so after this demonstration, uh, let's just quickly talk about negative steps. They're used if you want the numbers to be in descending order. Okay, so I'm going to comment this out and this out so we don't have anything printed. Okay, so if you want to print the numbers or use the numbers in descending order, you just need to do something like range 10. So the start is greater than the stop minus two. Okay, or you could even do something like negative numbers so from zero to minus 20, that's minus one. So if you run that, as you can see, 10, 8, 6, or zero minus one, minus two, etc. Okay, really, really cool. Then of course you can use indexes and slicing. So if you have like my range is equal to range 10, 
20. Then you want to get the number at index 2. You can do something like that. And run with the range. As you can see, 12. So the so it's 10, 11, 12, which is 0, 1, 2. The second index is 12. That's right. And you can even use, of course, negative ranges. I mean, indexes, minus 1. OK, so this is the last. So 12, 19. Last number is 19. That's right. And last but not least, the slicing. So let's say you want to create another range from that range start from the beginning up to the seventh index, do something like that, range 10, 17, okay? So this is how you can use slicing and stuff like that. That's sort of the same as the lists. So I'm not going a lot into that, but you know, you know that you can use slicing in the six, stuff like that, okay? So as I said uh, during the video, ranges are mostly used to loop for a certain number of times which is where you should use them instead of lists. So a range is used, especially when you do something like 4x in range 10, you want to loop 10 times, print x, for example, okay? So if you run that, obviously you get zero through nine by that, okay? If you want to learn even more about Python, here you have another cool video to learn from. I'll see you there.